Eastern. The big game is tonight, 7 Eastern on ESPN. It's the renewal of the backyard brawl between Pitt and West Virginia. Two schools playing for the 105th time, but for the first time since 2011. Then on Saturday, just one monster game after another. We start with Georgia, number three, beginning their title defense against Oregon. They have the third best chance the dogs do to make the playoff, according to our FPI. And then uh, I've run out of adjectives to describe how big this game is. It's Notre Dame and Ohio State at the shoe. Marcus Freeman will start his first full season in South Bend. He does so as a heavy underdog. And if this game wasn't important enough, there could be massive playoff implications on the line if you go off past history. Since the playoffs began in 2014, no team has made the playoff after losing their opening game of this season. So we go live to Pittsburgh, and Desmond Howard is getting up with us early this morning. And so that feels awfully good to be able to say that. And, Des, let's start with that monster game that we'll have Saturday night on ABC. If history is the judge, I just said it, no team has ever lost week one and gone on to make the playoff. So someone's chances come to an end on Saturday night. Do you give Notre Dame, they're a 17-point dog, do you give them a real shot to win this game? I tell you what, Greeny, it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a big hill to climb for Notre Dame and uh, Coach Freeman to go into the shoe and beat Ohio State, especially they got C.J. Stroud. I mean, at this point, Vegas has him penciled in as the favorite to win the Heisman. You have Njigba, his receiver, who's one of the best receivers in the country, Trevion Henderson. I mean, they have an explosive offense. If Notre Dame is going to pull off the impossible, they're going to have to slow down that offense. The one thing that Michigan was able to do a year ago when they played Ohio State, was they were able to slow down the offense and make them sustain 10, 12, 14 play drives. This is a high-octane, explosive offense that scores quick. Big playability. I think if you make them methodically uh, drive the ball down the field, play after play, series after series, that's going to play into Notre Dame's hands because it takes Ohio State and Ryan Day, it takes them out of their rhythm. So the defense for Notre Dame is going to have to play a monster game if they're going to pull off this victory. All right, so understanding the way this all works, and uh, Desmond, no one understands it better than you. This game, someone is going to lose this game in the first weekend of September, and both these teams are thinking about trying to play in the first week of January. So with the way everything shapes up, which one can better afford to lose? Which team can, can lose this game and still have the better chance of making it to the playoff in the end? Green, I would have to say Ohio State because a year ago, don't forget, Ohio State was a highly ranked team. They played Oregon at home early in the season. And the Oregon Ducks beat Ohio State in Columbus on that Saturday afternoon. People thought, okay, it's over for Ohio State. They have no chance of making the college football playoff. But it came down to the last game of the season when they traveled to Ann Arbor. They took on Michigan. They were still a top-ranked team. Had, noted, had Ohio State beat Michigan in Ann Arbor that Saturday afternoon, they went on to play in the Big Ten Championship and probably the college football playoffs. So I think that Ohio State, even if they lose this game, they have a shot to make it to the college football playoff. Notre Dame, I don't think so. If Notre Dame loses Saturday, I think their college football playoff hopes are shot. So I think the Buckeyes are still be in an okay position, even if they lose to Notre Dame at home. All right, so what's at stake? There you have it, almost everything. In the meantime, Desmond, I, I want you to hear this sneaky big news. This came across our wires uh, yesterday, and I think it's really it's important to make sure everyone is aware of this. So there's going to be this uh, virtual meeting tomorrow, right? Eleven people are going to get together on Zoom. They're presidents and chancellors. They're the people who make the decisions in college football. And there is a really good chance they will vote on a format, and they need to unanimously agree. But if they do... It would mean that the college football playoff could be expanded as soon as two years from now, 2024. So this is stuff I think Desmond fans care about and is one of the preeminent voices in the sport. I will just ask you directly, are you in favor of the playoff expanding as quickly as possible? Green, I fought it for so long. I didn't want these student athletes to have more games, extra games, but, you know, it's inevitable. And, and why not, why delay it? So I understand that they want to expedite this process. I think about a year and a half ago, there were secret meetings about expanding the college football playoff. But then when the Big 12 lost Oklahoma and, and Texas, that sort of realignment set things back. And now you're looking at the Big 10. 
they're adding UCLA and USC. In the Big Ten, 10 months ago, when they had these meetings, they voted against expansion. Now, the Big Ten, the ACC, and the Pac-12, they're all uh, are believed to vote in favor of expansion. So it's, it's inevitable, so why delay it? I mean, this game is changing every day. We understand the changes that are taking place, and you can see where it's headed. So I think that they should expand the college football playoff because it's inevitable, Greeny. And I want to ask, again, Dez, a Heisman Trophy winner, one of the great players ever, Marcus Spears, you won a national championship as a player at LSU in the previous format in the BCS. I just wanted to get your take on it as well. Do, would you like to see them expand the playoff as soon as possible? I wholeheartedly agree with Dez because it's evolution. That's what's happening. We saw the NFL go up to seven teams in the playoff. It's, it's what's going to happen. First, it's a financial ramifications. You make more money. Um, I've always been what, what Dez said. I've always been the guy to think about this, the athlete, like how much on their body, how much of a toll are you taking on them by adding a game or having to add extra weeks to the season? But ultimately, I look at college football now as, a, as almost the NFL G League based on NIL and the things that you're able to do now and how the game is ever evolving. So, yeah, go ahead and expand it. Let more teams get in, and it'll drive prices up, and we'll all be excited about it. We won't talk about a damn expansion once it happens. Des, I can see you want to jump in. Give me – I got 15 seconds. Go. Really quick. Kansas City at the end of that game. And also, I, I'm a reminded, man, Bart just brought it up. Von Miller steps over into a defense who will be an unquestioned lead on that side of the ball with two Super Bowl uh, rings. And also remember that this team played the playoffs without Tredavious White last year. I know that's not a huge deal to people out there that likes to hear names, but when you have a corner like that, it absolutely changes the way you can play football down the stretch. And I might add, if he would have been a part of that Kansas City game, we may have looked at a different outcome. So Tredavious White being back, Von Miller implementing leadership, I'm going Buffalo Bills because we know they're going to be fine on offense. Bart, who you got? I mean, listen, like, you know, you don't have to try and reinvent the wheel. Marcus Smear uh, set us on the right course. It's got to be the Buffalo Bills. And you also talk about the the, the, the small players, the complimentary players that they brought in, bringing in Jameson Crowder, who's one of the best slot receivers in the game. Mm -hmm. You know, Gabe Davis is, 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 is a budding star. You look at what he did with Kansas City last year. I think if you if you, you put your heart of hearts, and they're a team that has the easier path and the easier division as well. So you, you talk there about, you, you, know, you know, Kansas City, you talk about other teams, they're going to beat each other up with inside the division. Yeah. So we got two votes for the Bills. Mike Tannenbaum, uh, you have basically adopted Justin Herbert. Uh, and he's going to change. He's going to have to become <laughs> Justin Herbert Tannenbaum. Um, is the, have you got? It would stun me if you don't have the Chargers. No stunning here. It's the Chargers. And it's for a lot of the little things besides Justin Patrick Herbert. What they did in the trenches on both sides. Zion Johnson, another first round pick on that offensive line. We know they could score, but if we go to the other side of the ball, Swag, do I'm surprised you didn't talk about guys like Austin Johnson, Sebastian Jones Day. They fortified their run defense. And then, guys, how do you close out games? Bart, you know this. You got to be able to sack the quarterback. Right. Not only do they have Joey Bosa, but they added Khalil Mack. This is the most complete team in the AFC. All right, I wanted to go a different direction. And look, I, I thought all of you would take the Jets. Otherwise, I would have taken the Jets because that <laughs> seems like the overwhelmingly obvious <laughs> pick. But you know what? We've talked about it this morning. Sometimes history repeats itself. Sometimes in Baltimore, a quarterback bets on himself, wins the Super Bowl, and winds up becoming the highest paid player in the National Football League. I think Lamar Jackson could do just that. This is a team that was the one seed in the AFC last year at a point in the season where I think they called me to come play running back and secondary for them. They were so banged up. If this team stays even remotely healthy, I believe the Baltimore Ravens have an excellent chance of winning the AFC. And DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner.